1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, 8 to 10. He said, be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Next verse. So Paul is teaching us how to deal with him. The first thing that Paul speaks about here is what we call persistent resistance in the faith. So the first way of spiritual warfare is persistence or persistent resistance in the faith. The reason why it needs to be persistent is because Satan will not back out at your first charge. He will never back out just because you shouted. He will back out when he sees that you are interested in this battle in such a way that you are not willing to back out. So he will now say, all right, let's postpone this. So you keep persisting in faith until you notice Luke chapter 4 verse 13. Luke chapter 4 verse 13 is what we suggest to you that the battle has ended temporarily. And when the devil had ended all his temptations, he departed from him for what? A season. So until the devil departs, you do not end your persistent resistance in the faith. Is that clear? Hmm. Go back to First Peter chapter 5. After the first festival of glory that we had, many people in Africa watched that crusade. And I got an invitation to Uganda. I sent Shala, Epore, and Jangfa to go for that mission. When they went for that mission, they did very well. Another door of ministry opened to them, not to me now, but to them, to go to Rwanda the next year. I went to Rwanda. When they got to Rwanda, Ukwara saw a spirit, an evil spirit in the realm, and he, he resisted. And he went to sleep in the night. The spirit came and choked him. And he couldn't say Jesus. Now, when you watch wrestling, <laughs> stay with me. Don't laugh, don't laugh. <laughs> During a wrestling fight, have you ever seen that an opponent won a fight just because he gave one blow? So what makes you think that after that one blow, the fight has ended, so you went to sleep? The devil is more active when men are less active. That's why the devil chose the night. That's the most vulnerable period for men. But the most active period for spirits. If you want to be a warrior, then you will pay the price to be awake when men sleep. Huh? That's when spirits are active. From 12 to 2, they are most active. Most witchcraft meetings that are held are held from 12 to 2 because spirits are active. Any decision you make, you can release it to demons through incantation. They will take it and prosecute it. And you can come by 5 a.m., 6 a.m. when day, the day is breaking. And you will see that what the demons transmitted actually got home. So if you are under attack, expect a call from the person fighting you 
6 a.m. Now, this is warfare now. So, I, I won't hide it again. I have to tell you the truth. So, when you give the spirit a blow, resist, boom! They gave blow and then went to sleep. When the spirit, the spirit didn't fight them instantly. When he is most active, he now came. You know, in wrestling, there's something they call hammer lock. Hammer lock. That they will put your head here and lock it up. That was what they did to Ubore. And that's why I was, it's, it's like this. Hammer lock. The person that was bold, that struck a chord now in the afternoon, in the night, could not stay. Because he was under. He didn't know, he didn't understand that in spiritual warfare, you resist steadfast in the faith. So when you give that blow in the afternoon, in the night, put on your boxers and, and wait for the spirit. Because the spirit will come. Ooh. The spirit will come. Most of you will do che, 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 in the daytime and go on. No, real warriors know that that che, 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 che is problem. In the night, that's when you will see a, a song will start. Warriors, there are songs you need to see if you want to war very well. There are selected songs for warfare, like the one I sang now. Is he charges God? I will not go there yet. Let let's still be going small by small, small by small, small by small. We went for a. Meeting in Ghana. When we're done with the meeting, our friends came together. They had elaborate plans on how we will spend time and relax. And I found out that uh, Ghana has a wonderful resource. You know, you just want to a beach. You know, you want to just relax. Ghana is wonderful. So we traveled, went deep, and then in the heart of a village, there were very cozy places and a beach. I took the children, the children forgot us and began to swim. Philip B took a bike on, on the river. I was praying for him. <laughs> Everyone was active. But you know what? By one o'clock, that fire came in. Before I began to decree those things, I decreed the fire. It came in. Anytime that fire comes, it means God has given me authority to speak something. So I now told God, I said, there's no war here. Everybody is running around, you know. The place is not for war. <laughs> we have finished the fight. The fire. From one o'clock, I went to sleep. I woke up. By four, the fire had intensified. By six, it had intensified. So I now say, okay, okay, since you want to kill something, I'm walking on the beach. If you see the thing, show me. The moment I said that, I saw standing on the water. A goddess looking at me. So, my, my disposition was this. This place is not for spirits. It's for men. You have no right to be standing there. So, in the name of Jesus, be gone. The spirit didn't expect that power. The power that struck that spirit. He didn't expect it. This Prayer I prayed for six o'clock. By was it seven or eight? I gathered the whole team, all the swimming people, then Philip B. I gathered everybody and said, There's work. We now prayed till ten o'clock. There about. I'm not very sure of the time, but it's something like that. So there was a release. 
We went to the room. I can, at least I can tell you about our own room. Me and my wife. And she went to sleep. And I know that it's not time to sleep. <laughs> and then demons with two heads came to our room. One came by one, two heads. I still told that demon that this place is not for spirits. This place is for men. We are the ones that have control here. And I did not come in my name. I came in the name of Jesus. The thing went outside the room. I was walking on the pavement, walking on the pavement till three o'clock. Meanwhile, on the bed, my wife will be doing as if she's having a bad dream. I will touch her, I will touch her. From one till three, she was doing as if she had a, was having a bad dream. But I know what was happening. In the morning, all the team members that came to that place, I gathered us together. Everybody. So, what did you see after the prayer? Because you need to get feedback. Because when battles take place, God gives visibility. He gives us the opportunity to see what is happening. It's part of his responsibility because he's the one that teaches your hands to fight and your fingers to war. So he will give you a clue as to what was going on. And the thing about spiritual warfare, don't be used to fighting it alone. Not because you don't have the anointing or the authority, but most times the feedback may not come to you. The feedback, I mean divine feedback. If, if you are like 12 people, maybe 4 people will receive feedback. But without fail, there must be feedback. God must show what is happening. So you gather your intelligence from the feedback. Oh, you are not with me. <laughs> Daniel chapter 2. Let me enlighten you. Meanwhile, First Peter 5 is our scripture. We'll come back to it if the Lord permits. Are you there, Daniel? All right. Daniel chapter 2, verse 17. Okay, let's say 16. 16. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he will give him time and that he will show the king the interpretation. 17. What did he do? Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to his companions. That's how spiritual things are, are, are sought. It was Daniel alone that went to the king. I heard you are desperately looking for interpretation. Do not give me time. So the king accepted. Then Daniel went back. And he got his companion. 18. That they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret. And uh, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the secret was revealed unto Daniel in the ninth vision. All of the companions produced the answer, but Daniel received the answer. The shape of spiritual warfare is corporate. You are not with me. The shape of spiritual warfare is what? That's why the basic unit 
The basic unit can be you and your wife. Maybe if your wife doesn't, is not interested, you can get someone else. If your husband is not interested, you can get somebody else. But spiritual warfare basically is more corporate in outlook. You see, the anointing was upon Elijah. You understand that? And because it was upon Elijah, Jezebel threatened Elijah, because he knows if he takes Elijah out, there is nobody that has that spirit of judgment operating in him. So before Elijah went out, God told him, put the anointing on different people. Let one man not carry it. In the days of Elijah, Elisha, they did not seek to kill him. There were a few people that were operating in that dimension, so they did not zero it in on him. In the time of John the Baptist, that spirit of judgment came upon one man. What happened again? Herodias fingered him. That is the reason why I believe that the greatest service I will do to God is to ensure that many people carry the anointing I carry. And maybe by God's providence, you will even carry a higher measure. Right? God can decide that. So it's not up to me. But that I disciple someone that God can put something heavier than what he gave me is a sign that I'm great in heaven. When the anointing is on many people, Satan knows that if he kills one, he has not solved the problem. They will leave. But if the anointing is on one man, one champion, It is very easy to know who to take out. For a long time in Nigeria, ministers pride in the fact that they are lone rangers in the wilderness of the anointing. It's a risky disposition. It's a risky place to be. So one of the questions we need to be asking ourselves as, as ministers, who have you raised? A pastor was celebrating his 50th birthday and many gifts were coming in. Many gifts were coming in. People were traveling in and giving gifts. The only question they did not ask in that birthday is, who has he raised? Because there was no one on ground. Meanwhile, the sheep of spiritual warfare itself is what? It's corporate. Daniel went to his companions and all of them went to desire mercies of God. Right? But it was one person that received the feedback. So it's a corporate thing. So when we go fighting, we do night vigil today. Before we begin night vigil tomorrow, we have to Interview the participant. It, what, what was the feedback? Because that's the mode in which intelligence comes to you. Spiritual warfare is fought on the level of intelligence. Not on the level of your human intelligence, but spiritual So, the first disposition of a spiritual warrior is to resist steadfast in the faith. And you don't stop resisting until the devil decides to take a break. So, if the devil is willing to go on for 17 months, you resist for 17 months. That is the area in which perseverance in prayer is a requirement. You will stay on the field of battle as long as Satan is willing to stay. Exactly. 
You don't like that. The meaning of that is spiritual warfare is not a sprint. It's a marathon. It is not a one, one touch and go thing. Because if you do one touch and go, he will meet you in the night. So you resist steadfast in the faith. It is a marathon. Something you continue doing. Until Satan decides that, all right. It is obvious that it is futile trying to contend with you. I will come back again in another season. So when he leaves you, that is when you now enter into breakthrough. You enter into another level. You establish yourself on another height. Because when he's coming back, he's not coming back with the old weapons. He's coming back with new weapons. So weapon, he goes into the laboratory to forge weapons. And that's why the Bible says no weapon that is forged. Because it is forged, it is forged with you in mind. Not forged with, with Philip in mind. Forged with you in mind. So he needs some intelligence from you. He needs to understand the way you operate. He needs to know how you relate with your husband. He needs to know what your salary is. In, then he forges a weapon with all of those parameters in mind. It takes him time to forge it. So while you are consolidating in his absence, do so. Huh? Seeking higher levels of authority in the spirit. Because when you relax, because the breakthrough has come, you now buy a Benz, that type that the hair is like this. And then you ride it to the filling station and horn. Oh! So that uh, uh, someone that buys this car, you have to see it at least. You will not be ready when this this strange personality comes with a new weapon. It has the, 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 the specifications of your neck is built into that weapon. Unfortunately for us, the life of a Christian is a life of war. Unfortunately. I know you want it to be a life of breakthrough. That word is not in the Bible. So you resist steadfast. And you keep resisting till Satan turns back. If you get a major breakthrough like that and Satan turns back once, he, does, he has not only turned back from you, he turned back from your generation. He turned back from your son, from your daughter. He turned back, he turned back. The kind of expression that your children will have because of that one victory that you secure is unthinkable. And if you fail in that battle, that same ground will be a slippery ground for your sons and daughters in the days to come. So the next time you say saviors will come out of Zion, let me educate you about the responsibility of being a savior. It means you will never turn back in battle. And that's why there is no armor built for the back of a Christian. You have breastplate of righteousness. You have what? Shield of faith. Sword of the spirit. Word of truth. Helmet of salvation. Nothing is built for the back. Because the name of this warfare is no retreat. No surrender. Please help me tell your neighbor and tell your neighbor with faith, Satan will not see my back. <laughs> Let me t- tell you, show you the words that you hold in your mouth when you are worrying. Let me give you a sample. This is not, this is just an example, all right? You can devise your own words consistent with the shape of the battle. Exactly. But God was teaching um, Ezekiel spiritual warfare. He 
Ezekiel chapter 29 verse 2. Son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and all Egypt. Speak and say, this is God teaching, giving the man words. Thus said the Lord, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lieth in the midst of the rivers, which had said, my river is my own. When these demons come, they claim ownership. There is a language of ownership that is retained in their words. That's what that dragon said. He said, this river is my own. He said, this river, I made it for myself. That means it's for me alone. There's this Spiritual entities are territorial, they are possessive, and they claim ownership. Have you seen spirits before that are attached to your family? And they believe they own it, they own your family. That's their nature. These utterance that God was putting in the mouth of Ezekiel, Ezekiel was supposed to hold those, that utterance and that is what he's speaking consistently. Before you fight, ask God to give you the utterance. Are you with me? Don't worry, we'll practice, we'll do the practical of what I'm teaching here today so that you see how it looks like. <laughs> The realm we went when we prayed those prayers. You were not the one praying, but was your, the Holy Ghost in you that was doing that thing. Because you had moved the battle into the supernatural. You were no longer using your supernatural capacity. The utterance was coming from the Holy Ghost. You, I tell you the truth, you cannot ascertain what happens in those moments. The nature of these spirits is that they are possessive. They claim ownership. They claim rights. And they believe that dominion is their portion. It will take one kingdom man to change all of that. If you are willing to persevere. That's why some of us are sold out. It is war till the end. That's how Christians are supposed to be. Warriors. Yes. Not guys, not guys, but warriors till the end. Hallelujah. So we are going to fight. But let me round up. Because I can't finish the teaching. It's, it's long. Hmm. Go on. Next verse. This is God still saying, I will put hooks in thy jaws. I will cause the fish of thy rivers to stick on thy scales. I will bring thee up out of the midst of thy rivers. And all the fish of thy rivers shall stick unto thy scales. And I will leave thee thrown into the wilderness, thee and all the fish of thy rivers. And thou shalt fall upon the open fields, and thou shalt not be brought together, nor gathered. I will give thee for a meat to the beast of the field, and to the fowls of heaven. When God puts words in your mouth to utter, you are not thinking of what to say. For Ezekiel, these utterances will not be edited. If he wakes up on, uh, on, on Monday night, he sets his face and he begins with the utterance. You don't need to change utterances too much when you are fighting, especially if you know what you are fighting for. The ability is not intelligence in 
changing utterance. The ability is in the, the ability to, to resist steadfast. Part of the prayer we are going to pray is this. You will ask God to give you the grace to stay. Many weaklings begin this project and then run away. It means you are not fit for the kingdom. You put your hand to the plow and you look back. Meanwhile, you're already in the battle. You can't even decide to, if you quit, even if you run, it means the intensity of the pressure will be multiplied. I know you want a break. You want to just stretch and just. The Lord, the Lord said, if, eh, if we can fight this year, if we do what we are doing, we'll continue. By June, eh, Corona will start becoming a thing of the past. If we continue, June, July, you begin to see that place of preeminence that he has in our, in our newspapers, it will lose it. Can you resist steadfast? To begin to lose his, his grip on the earth. Because we refuse to back out. It will have no choice but to reschedule his meeting. And say, I will come back again. I will be back. It means I can't succeed now. But I will come back. I was in 300 level in the university and I went home. And because of how I love church, I just dropped my bags at home. I took my Bible and went to church. Our, one of our elders now saw me and said, Hey, God, we, we are welcome. Never been like, welcome like that. What's the problem? Then the next day, the elder sent for me, came to the house. I saw her granddaughter in chains. They told me the story. That she got initiated in a witchcraft court, an ancient witchcraft court. In fact, the totem of that court, they got it from Benin, Benin, Benin City. That's where they got that totem. From the original Benin altar of witchcraft. That's where they got that. The woman that held it was about 80 something years old. And she was one of the people that they initiated recently. And she fell in love with her. And called her and said, I'm going to transfer my powers to you. Because the time for my departure has come. But it's not something, it's not a burden that you can bear casually. So what I will do is I will release a few demons. If you can manage them, then I will release the other ones. Those ones will be giving you wisdom. They will be speaking into your ears, teaching you what to do. So when they release a few demons on the lady, hmm, she trekked across four local governments. Uh, yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> She trekked without getting weary eh, across four local governments. It was true. Thank God GSM had come. So it was a phone call she received. We saw your daughter in this local government. What? She, how did she get there like this? So you now know why the elder was happy. Because they took that lady for deliverance. Everywhere they knew how to go. Our case grew worse. When a 300 level student comes from the university, she's not celebrating. Her granddaughter can be. And you know those days, anywhere we saw demons, we went. Right? We won't check whether we have the clearance level to deal with, and the mess of the Lord was so active. I told the woman, 
I don't need physical deliverance. I will pray from 8 to 10. And your daughter will be free. In my house. I'll pray in my house. I've seen those ones before. Speak the word only and thy servant shall be healed. What you believe is what God has made you experience. Called my friend. And we began to pray. Six o'clock. Eight o'clock. Nine o'clock. Nine thirty. A beast now appears before me. With the face of a cat. High. Beyond. Far beyond the ceiling. Okay. I've seen demons before. I see them. They look like. uh, Some of them look like monkeys. Some like dogs. Some like snakes. The ones that tie your neck. That you you can't say. Those are the ones like snakes. They're like a thread. So they tie your neck. Then say, and say Jesus. I know those type. But I've never seen a demon that looked like a beast. And he looked at me with so much wickedness. And I spoke in tongues, all the tongues I knew how to speak. For 35 minutes. He, my tongues didn't affect it. I was just looking at me like this. And he told me. I will be back. So now I told the demon, why not now? Why do you need to go and prepare? See me now. Do you know that when he spoke to me, his mouth didn't move. He spoke through his thoughts and I got what he was saying. Say I will be back. He came back nine years later. We believe that you were blessed. Kindly subscribe, like this video. You may drop a comment. Powered by Stana Shania.